This is the nether, and I'm going to completely remove it. That includes the lava ocean, all the netherrack, and even the bedrock roof. And luckily, using this machine, it should make it super easy. Okay, that's one bedrock done. Only 300,000 more to go. This is going to take a while, and I wasn't being sarcastic. If I keep using this bedrock breaking method, I'll be doing this for the next 465 days in real life, which is why I introduce you to the Bedrock Breaker 2000. This machine breaks three bedrock every single second. Alright, let's start this thing up. Wait, why is it breaking? Let's try that again. Okay, it's working. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because beneath us is my friend Wenzo's base. And as you can see, he has a lovely view of the nether. But recently, he pranked me because I stole all his diamonds. So, to get him back, I'm going to strand his base in the middle of nowhere. And progress was going great as I just finished 15% of the first layer. But there was a huge problem. You see, this machine requires a lot of pistons to break the bedrock. Even after making them for three whole hours. Hours, that only made up for three rows of bedrock. I've got to place over a thousand rows fast because in seven days Wenzo gets back from his holiday and that is not a lot of time. So the only logical way to work faster is to build an entire piston factory. This factory can produce up to 5,000 pistons per hour. That's a big improvement to my old measly 600 per hour. So now we can completely automate pistons. All we gotta do is put them all to use. And we are finally halfway done with the first layer. Did I mention there's five layers? And that wasn't even my biggest problem. These stupid ghasts are. Every time I get the machine working, they completely destroy it, which leads me to having to rebuild the entire thing just for it to get blown up again. So the only solution I can find to fix this is Minecraft's most dangerous mob. Oh, God. Now, how on earth will these wardens actually help us? You see, the nether can only handle a max mob count of 70. So if we fill that up with 70 wardens, the game won't allow any more mobs to spawn. That's one down, only 69 to go. And while I'm capturing these wardens, for every subscriber I get from this video, I'm going to place down one tiny miles, as right now, our server has been attacked by these meep statues. So if you want to help fight back, claim your tiny miles by subscribing, and let me know if in the comments. This is taking way longer than what I first thought, which is why I introduce you to the Warden Trapper. This farm has been said to spawn up to 2,000 Wardens per hour, so if this doesn't work, I don't know what I'll do. Okay, it does seem to be working. Now we can sit here and let the Trapper work its magic. It's been a few hours now, and we have well over 70 wardens trapped in this box. Okay, I'm not seeing any mobs at the moment. I think we've actually completely removed all the mobs from the nether. This is insane. And we are done. The first layer of bedrock has now been removed. We just need to repeat this process a few more times. Ow. Uh, who, who was that? Oh. Of course it was bacon. Time is ticking though, and there's not a single second to waste without breaking bedrock. It's 4am right now, and I'm placing pistons. I'm so tired. Okay, I haven't slept for about 48 hours now, but we have now finally completed breaking all of the bedrock. Now we can move on to phase two, breaking all the netherrack. <sighs> this better be worth it. The hole is 250 by 250 blocks, meaning I'm going to have to mine around 8 million blocks. Now I have a couple ideas on how I could do this way faster, but it involves a lot of TNT, which makes this a whole lot more dangerous. The first machine I'm building is a world eater, and it basically drops TNT down, slowly eating away the world below. I've just got to try and not blow up Wenzo's base, or else that's even more time wasted rebuilding it. And I really do not have any any more time to spare. Okay, that's this side done. Sadly, TNT doesn't destroy lava. So, bam. Oh, hang on, I missed, I missed a spot. Bam. 
I'm hoping that looked cool. All right, now this next bit is going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to need to remove this section of the netherrack without destroying any of Wenzo's base. So if I just move the machine up slightly, the TNT should explode before it even reaches the base. Okay, I think we're safe. Oh God. The netherrack is now destroyed, meaning we can finally start removing the rest of the nether. But Wenzo is getting back soon, and I'm not even halfway finished. Uh, how on earth am I going to finish this in time? That could work. Although the time was going down, it was so much easier doing this project with someone else, as we were making double the progress. Oh my god, this place honestly looks <laughs> insane. Alright, I've just finished off the fourth section by myself, so we can now move on to phase three, draining the nether. This may be the most dangerous stage yet, as unlike when I drained the ocean, lava hurts a lot. So I'm going to have to be extra careful if I want any chance of completing this project before Winslow gets back. Okay, I've done some testing and I've found out the fastest way to drain the lava is to use sand. What is that? Hello? Why was there just a random wither head? Well, that was random. So here we are, collecting as much sand as possible. 7,059 stacks to be exact. I'm not doing that. How how on earth am I gonna get all that sand? Oh god. Wenzo gets back in like 17 hours and without this sand I won't be able to remove any of this lava. But luckily I had a plan to fix this. So using this end portal I can make a sand duper. I don't know how it works but it does and that's all that matters. Okay, that's this side completely drained. It took way longer than what I first thought it would, but placing all that sand practically destroyed my fingers. So I've switched to using these machines instead, which should remove the lava one layer at a time. And at the moment, it seems to be working wonders. And now to blow it all up, and we're 50% of the way there. And getting scarily close to Winzo getting back. Oh god. So I still have one last idea to finish this prank in time. What if we could drain the lava and destroy the blocks at the same time? You see, just using both these machines at once doesn't really work. Huh. But there is a huge machine that can actually do this automatically. Only problem is, it requires a lot of honey. Uh... That, that could be be a problem. Luckily, we do have a honey farm, so I'm just gonna AFK here and try and get as much as possible. That is not going to be enough, which I'm not surprised by, as apparently this farm only produces around 400 bottles of honey per hour. So I'll need to speed that process up big time. Now these only produce honey in the day, meaning this farm is completely useless at night. So if I rebuild the farm in the end, where there's no daylight cycle, the bee should produce honey 24-7, pretty much doubling the amount of honey. Um. That's still not a lot of honey. But I'm not giving up that easily. This farm has to work or else my prank has utterly failed. Okay, I've let this machine do its thing for a while now. Please be honey in these chests. Oh my god, it actually worked. There's so much honey. Bam, the Honey Destroyer 5000 is here. And we're already starting to make some pretty good progress on this last corner. As you can see, the TNT destroys the blocks while the machine behind sweeps up all the lava. Shoot, why did it break? No, oh, oh for God's sake. I was about to go to bed and leave the machine running, but now I've got to go and rebuild the entire thing. <sighs> Great. Alright, progress is finally starting to go well with this new machine. I did have to pull an all-nighter, but I'll say it was definitely worth it for the progress we made. Okay, this is looking better. I am pretty much dead now after having no sleep. But Wenzo gets back in only a couple hours, so let's take down this machine and rebuild it on the final segment. Oh my god, we're so close to being done. Okay, time to turn the machine off, and let's destroy this whole thing. 
now let's just clean up the edges around the base and with that we are done the entire nether has been removed and after seven long days of hard work let's show wenzo what i've done to his base all right wenzo welcome to your base Wenzel, what do you think of your base? I like it. Wait, what? Thanks, Miles. How kind of you. In fact, you're so thoughtful. Ah, oh, Miles, this is why we're best friends forever. And no one could ever separate us. Why does this always happen?